Welcome to Wednesday. Yes. Um, so uh, if you can hear us, hopefully uh, say yes or say something or say hello. Um, if you can only see our mouths moving, just <laughs> just hopefully you can read lips. Yeah. So um, we're having some mild te technical difficulties. We uh, lost our router extension and so we're trying to fix it and in the process. Fantastic. Thanks, Shirley. Um, found some other problems. So um, we are, uh, we're, we're going to still do everything that we said we were going to do. We're just going to do it with one camera and hopefully we will stay connected and everything's going to work. So here we go. We're, we're not going to yammer and, and do our normal, yeah, what have you been doing, doing and what have you been doing and yeah. yada, yada, yada. You can do that if it works. As everything's stitching and whatnot, maybe we'll, we'll uh, do a little bit. So um, we decided that we were going to talk about fringe. And for the main reason, we've done it before, but it's been a little while. Um, and uh, the reason that we are going to cover it, quote unquote, again, is because there is uh, an adorable pair of flowers on the new 22 inch uh, let me call you tweet heart pillow. And those two yellow centers here are done with fringe. So there's a couple different ways that you can do that. You can either do it with water soluble bobbin, or you can do it with a darker bobbin. So depending upon uh, what you have um, in your stash or what you prefer, if you have them both, you can take the pick. So we're going to show you how to do both ways. Um, I've pulled that flower out. We're just going to do the fringe part. We're not going to stitch all of the other parts today. So it'll be um, a pretty quick stitching part. We're not going to show you the stitching part because that would be another camera and then we're not going to go there. Yeah. So um, we're going to just uh, make that really simple. So um, to start with, which way you want to go first, uh, uh, water or dark? Let's do the dark. All right. So I have here a uh, brown bobbin and I have, it looks like pink thread in um, the top. That'll be nice so and contrasty. It should be nice and contrasty, which is the main goal when you're doing it this way. So you are going to need your standard bobbin and you're also going to need a colored um, contrast bobbin. So when you're doing fringe, you're going to have the large satin stitches and then you're also going to have a tie down really skinny satin stitch. For the large ones, those are the ones that you need your alternative bobbin mm -hmm. for. So that's what's gonna stitch first. So that's what I'm gonna put that in. So I'm gonna put the dark bobbin in. And of course I need to actually thread that, not just set it in there. It's funny about that. It's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah. And um, for today's purpose, I just have some stabilizer in the hoop. Um, this is just standard cutaway. And um, what did you do to that? I put it down <laughs> so I could reach the keypad. <laughs> And uh, now I'm putting it back up so that Good we don't plan. get stuck. There we so, go. So again, I'm just stitching on some white stabilizer. Um, it's not. Uh, hey, that's my thread. I forgot to take it home with me. I'm like, where did that come from? Oh yeah, yeah, that was my uh, my border stitch. Border. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we are just going to stitch that large satin piece, and that is what will end up being the fringe. Is going to be that large satin so this is a pretty quick stitch um and we're just going to go ahead with nope no we're not because in our movements haste we forgot to actually not um, thread the needle well i thought it was it was right down there so it looked like it was um but it wasn't it fooled me so here we go now we're gonna stitch that so again it's a circle in this case and it's going to be a large obviously not actually that large but a big wide satin stitch and in general we don't want our satin stitches to be that wide no they get hung up or caught they get or caught on things rings easily uh, clipped different whatnots um but this is going to be one of those times where we actually want them that way so. and if they were making this pillow um would this is not one of the first things you stitch you stitch no. the petals and uh and that stuff yep. first so um your when, if you're making this flower here, you've got um, four where, different where? colors of petals that go around the outside. And then you also have the stem. So you would do the stem, the four different colors of petals, and then you will do the stitching uh, of the, the fringe itself. So again, I just jumped forward into those uh, stitches because that's what, that's the meat and potatoes of what we're going to talk about today. 
So um, I didn't grab any water either. I went looking for a water pen and then I, I got distracted. Miss Carolyn, would you mind grabbing a water aqua pen off the wall? I, I will uh, maybe use some starch or something to actually. I can use the starch pen, but yeah. would you get an a actual aqua pen? It's the pink one off the wall. So I'm going to um, put this up to the camera up there so you guys can see what this looks like. Um, and it's just a nice wide circle. And then on the back, you can see very easily those bobbin stitches that are there. So it's nice and dark brown. And um, PJ's really freaking out. <laughs> I don't need to change the top thread. What I do need to do is change my bobbin thread. So the next stitch is going to be that really, really tiny satin stitch that's going to anchor one side of these big stitches. Right. Otherwise, um, if we clipped the stitches, it would all just fall apart. It would just fall apart. Which... So yeah, this is the, the key thing when you're doing fringe is remembering. remembering. <laughs> yes. That is the hard part. Remembering to change it to whatever color or water soluble part you want. And then remembering to change it back. Um, because otherwise it really doesn't help you. you no. Know, this, when it's um, the dark, it's not as big a deal if you forget it still stinks, mm -hmm. but at least everything won't fall apart. True. When if it's water you, soluble. If you have forgotten. But if you're using water soluble and yeah. you forget, it it it's not a good thing. No. So I have put in my standard white bobbin. And now I'm gonna stitch that really tiny one that's gonna keep everything in place. That is it. Thank you, my dear. Excellent. So um I have actually purchased the replacement nubs for my water pen. Mm -hmm. You think I know where those are? In a super safe place. They are so, so safe. Yep. I, I, I feel like sometimes when I put things in a super safe place that I should text a friend. <laughs> like post it somewhere. Just this so is you where know, this is where I put my super safe stuff. Then I could just go back and find it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So once again, I'm going to show you guys what that looks like. So that is... Um, that tiny, tiny circle on the inside there. And then again, on the back, you can see maybe um, that it's got the white center to that tiny circle in this, and then the dark brown on the outside. And then I'm going to just set that aside and we're going to redo those two stitches. Yes. What do you say? Yeah. Okay. Um, should we do it? We could probably do it right below it. Yeah. On the same one. Then Let's they just can do compare that. it. Should we do Let's that? Let's just do that. Okay. So um, we're going to uh, back out of. Nope. Go back to zero. Yes. Where's zero? Thank you. All right. I've got a really good glare on here. All I can see is my shirt. Hmm. <laughs> That's probably a little hard. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is basically what we just did, but with a water soluble. So um, this is what I keep in my drawer. Um, so it's a little beat up by this point. Um, I have almost none left on my original spool. So I have my um, replacement spool ready to go. So if, whenever I do run out, You'll I'm ready to go mm -hmm. um, so that I'm not going to have to be in the middle of a project and have to stop because there's nothing worse than that, right? Um, and I have a bobbin in there as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't obviously leave this in with all of uh, my other bobbins because that would, of course, be bad. Yes. And you don't want to get that um, confused. No. So. I left the packaging in there because originally when I bought my first spool, it actually came in this packaging. So I just leave that in there. And then I always know exactly what's in this pack when I go to grab that yeah, out of my door. it's not 675 anymore. It is not 675 <laughs> anymore. Um, I don't remember this is my spool here. Uh, I don't have a price tag on this spool. I think I pulled it out before we yeah, uh, got it back tag. out on the shelf. Um, so water soluble is thread is exactly what it sounds like. It will literally dissolve in water. Um, and just like we put the dark bobbin in, I'm going to put my water soluble bobbin in. And the difference is a little bit um, smoother and longer pieces in your fringe. So instead of cutting, you're not going to uh, actually be cutting those long threads that are the, the long satin stitches. It's literally just going to melt away. So when you pull them to the front, you get um, loops 
or you can get loops. Sometimes you can still pop them. Yeah. But usually you get, so you'll get a longer fringe mm -hmm. and you don't get um, frayed edges. You get loops on the edges. Yeah. So there's actually a different look to the fringe depending mm -hmm. upon which type you use as well. Yeah. It's kind of like um, if you took a bunch of yarn and you, um, you just made loops with your yarn and you tied it at the top. That's what it looks like when you have um, water soluble in the bottom and um, it, you've got like, like the top and the bottom are still together. And um, when we trim those, um, we're basically cutting through there. So um, you get more wispy things. I'm not sure if I went down too far or not far enough. Let's go down a little more. That's as far as I can go. Perfect. And then we need to jump ahead. Yes. And do you remember what color? Oh. Yep. That one. That one. <laughs> okay. So we have just slid that down in the hoop. So it's going to be in the same hoop. You guys can see them right next to one another. And um, we're going to redo this. So I have now threaded our bobbin with the water soluble bobbin from my little bag. And I still have the pink up mm -hmm. top. So it's going to look exactly the same on top sort of, mm -hmm. when we're done. <laughs> and then uh, again, we're just going to stitch the long stitches this time around. Um, there is actually two layers this, we could have done that. Maybe we should do that on this one. Yeah. Um, so I will say there's two rings on this one. I don't like to do two rings when I'm cutting. It's, it's, such a, hard it's really, really hard to get both of them in there. Getting anywhere? You want to be, you want to come and say hi to everybody? Grandma's on. <laughs> Somehow I don't think he's going to come right no. by. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, he was running right over here. Yeah. I'm sorry. As fast as he gets. Yeah. Yeah, in the opposite direction. Yeah, he actually moved really fast that way. He did. That's the fastest we saw him move all day. <laughs> Yeah. In the opposite direction. He's like, he's like Tony. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that happened. I mean, he's literally like, it's all green. I, this is working. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. We're, we're still, we're still good. <laughs> good thing we have old technology and new technology. See, I was going to say, we could use my phone, except he, he has he's it. got it. Mm -hmm. It's got the app that he's using. We can, um, when you go to Fringe It, I'll pop in on mine. And we then, can, that sounds good. And yeah. then you, we can see. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we now have um, two pink circles. Mm -hmm. And on the back, uh, you like can see it looks yeah, a little bit. Um, it looks a little bit more regular, quote unquote. Yeah, you can um, see Because it's white. white in there, which our normal bobbin thread is white. Um, I am now going to switch back to my standard. And I know this sounds like overkill, it's but this back is in the white. Bag. It goes back in the bag, even in between, because I, how many white bobbins do you have laying around your table? More than one. <laughs> More than one. So it does sound like overkill, but I put it back in the bag. I yeah. don't ever set it down somewhere because then I'm like, Oh, which one was it? Mm -hmm. Then you have to throw them all out. Uh huh. <laughs> or just dump it in water <laughs> so you find the right one. Lick your fingers and whichever one sticks to your hand, that's the one that's. It. <laughs> Don't do that. But Lisa's <laughs> over there licking her bobbins. Uh, <laughs> now we're not for kids anymore. <laughs> you know, whatever works. Somebody is wondering if licking your bobbins is code for something. It is not. It is literally code for figuring out which bobbin is which. That's that's all that it is. All right. So I have Delicious. a standard. No. <laughs> Standard embroidery bobbin in again. And we're now going to do that tight, um, the, the locking in stitch. Okay. Yep. Because okay. we don't want our, we don't want the fringe to fall off. We do not. Because then we wouldn't have fringe. We'd have a bunch of loose thread. Yes. Then that's no fun. No. We wouldn't have to lick it though. <laughs> we would not have to lick it. Do not lick the back of this <laughs> to see if your thread is, um, yeah. I, I still think that maybe my camera is trying to focus on that white spot right in between us. Because mm. when you did your hair, you, you it kind moved. of went in and out of focus a little bit. Pretty pale. I am pretty pale. Yeah, it does not help that I have a white quilt behind uh, me. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Okay, so the next uh, stitch is uh, the outer circle in this. And I'm going to do it this time around so you guys can see what it is. This actually has a double ring. Mm -hmm. um, 
and since we're using water soluble, I'm willing to fart with it. <laughs> Um, seriously though, when we are cutting stitches and there are multiple rings, mm -hmm. we had a fringe lions made. Oh yes. Way back, way, oh, way back. Absolutely adorable stitch. Uh, I mean, absolutely painful. adorable to like, remember it and because it was big. It was like the, the circle was like this big. So there was a lot of stitches spent, and it was a double. Yes. I was the helper. I spent a lot of time helping get people picking out the, yeah. Um, and you know, it was like, oh, they missed stitches here. So if you miss a stitch, of course the thread's not going to come up. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't want to say it was before water soluble, but it was certainly before people put water soluble thread in the directions. Yeah. That was not the Kimberbell way. It wasn't. And, um, anyway, um, so we're now going to switch our bobbin again mm -hmm. because we're going to stitch another set of large stitches. So in your instructions for this particular design, it actually does give you change your bobbin, change your bobbin, change your bobbin. Um, and it is a, um, back into my bag of goodies here. <laughs> um, I know this sounds really stupid, but it has saved me so many times because I know exactly which bobbin it is I'm grabbing instead of going, hmm, which one was that? You can also mark your bobbin. Um, if you have a machine that you can mark a bobbin on um, right. that is not uh appropriate for all styles of machines so i'm not um i'm advocating not for advocating all. that if you have a special bobbin that you put a mark on something yeah you don't put nail polish on a bobbin that has reflective coating on the back that and the front that needs it i not that that has ever happened to anyone that i've ever known before mm. so we now have a large circle with water soluble bobbin, a tight inner circle with standard bobbin. Now we've switched back and we're gonna do a large outer circle with the large stitches with water soluble bobbin. I suspect that after we do this, we're gonna need to put regular bobbin thread in and uh, do something she's on so top smart. of it, right? She's smart, she's so, figured it all um, out. Sharon asks, how is the weather? Um, right now it's sunny and it's kind of 41 sunny. degrees. It's a little not sunny, it, it's trying. The sun is out. It's trying. It's not. It's not raining. It's not bright. Um, I mean, it's bright-ish. Ish. It's almost four o'clock. It could be dark right now. <laughs> I need more. You need more. I mean, it could be. Maybe this... I was wrong. This is the inner. I was saying it was the outer. I went the wrong direction. It's fine. Any Audi, it's close <laughs> enough. <laughs> it's um, yeah. It's it's Michigan, so. It's supposed to be really cold in January. So the fact that it's 40 degrees is... It could be so much worse. Right? It, right. Yeah. So, you know, everybody always says January is like the, the worst. It isn't. It's that first week of February that we always get just nailed with snow and, and terrible weather. It was always Samantha's birthday, which is February 5th, by the way, in case anybody needed to know that. <laughs> and it would just, we'd be like at her birthday party somewhere and it would just be coming down and Jeff would have to leave to go plow somewhere. <laughs> it was just like, oh, so terrible. Really All right. Fun. So here is our uh, difference. Oh, that does not look appropriate. All right. So the back of that, however, is um, you can see that there is a lot of bobbin thread in there. Uh, well, it's a little bit. It, and so you can see where having to trim just the right spot would not be fun. Mm -mm. So that's where I really like the water soluble because I don't have to worry about that. I just get it all wet and don't have to worry. So one more bobbin change. I'm going to take my water soluble bobbin and put it back where it belongs and close that little guy up so it stays where it belongs and doesn't fall out anywhere because I don't want to waste that money and lose that. <laughs> no fun. And we're now going to stitch the center of the flower, which is with standard bobbin so it will stay the center of the flower last part of this stitch and then we'll talk about how to actually make it fringe which would be the last stitch in this flower it would also be the actual last stitch of the flower yes i really should have really checked the front because i'm like licking these is it in your, do you have some in your which is way no it's mm. way over there it's fine i'll survive i uh, just apologize i'm just gonna lick, lick your lips a lot mm -hmm. okay Okay, so the song has been sung, which means we are done. The bat lady sang? Bat lady has sung. Is that still appropriate to say? I don't know. Probably not. 
is the fat the fat lady is our luminaire i mean she's a full like what 30 some odd inches mm -hmm. wide <laughs> so what are you doing I'm trying entering the studio oh you're entering the studio she is all right so i'm going to come up closer to this camera just since she's still working on that and so you can see the back there on this side over here you can see that we have bobbin um in both the ring on the outside and in the center there and then the dark brown is on this side here and that is the standard bobbin thread just in a alternative color so when we are working on fringe we're going to work the back of the hoop so you don't actually have to leave it in the hoop if you are all done but in all honesty the back of the hoop gives you a nice taut surface to work with so what do we I oh i i know what you're looking for yeah rice. it's gonna echo 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 it's here somewhere yeah 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 so for our um colored we are going to need an actual seam ripper i don't recommend scissors because you tend to cut too much so you do want a seam ripper for the um the colored bobbin and rolling 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 that camera there we go all right so you can see in a minute <laughs> in a moment you will see do, do, do. there we go there it is all right so as i said for these uh colored stitches here we're going to want to remove those Let me try to get there them we go better that's there better. we go. Um, we're going to want to use the seam ripper for that. For our water soluble, you can do whatever you would like. You can get a little a bowl of water and use a Q-tip and kind of drip water on there. I don't really recommend dousing your entire project with water. That's a little excessive. Um, this is what I like to use. Um, it is called an aqua pen. I literally call it my water pen because that's, you know, what it is. Um, and what you'll do is uh, it's got a little... Uh, squeegee at the end yep. you suck the water into the pen and you can't see it at all um, but that will then you can squeeze it in this little area here and then the tip gets wet and you can literally use it like a pen and just put the water where you need it to go so it works really nicely you get a lot of water right where you need it and um it's just super easy to mm -hmm. use i was saying um I purchased the new tips, so the nubs at the top, so this little uh, guy right here, the white part here, you can actually replace those. So I have scrubbed my stitches loose so much, my tip is it's very, it's, uh, blunt. it's very blunt. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been used very, very well heavily. Loved. Yes, it's been very well loved is exactly correct. So um, I can't say that it's got much life left in it so there are refill pieces that you can put in there um so if that is kind of where you're at by all means um you can get those too mm -hmm. and we actually i believe we even have them in stock because I, so. I ordered multiples when i ordered them for myself i thought mm, i can't be the only one in this boat mm -hmm. so um ordered them and they're on the wall here as well so um one that actually has liquid in it that there you might go. help so we're going to get the back of these stitches wet and we are going to cut the back of these so where i want to cut on here is actually right on that brown line which is why we had a different color so i am going to just cut a small section at a time i don't want to get too many because i am going to end up cutting things i don't want to cut yep so we're literally just going to do a seam ripper Normally, I would do this in front of myself, not off to the side, which is why I'm taking my time with it. So I can see my stabilizer or your fabric, whatever it is that you're cutting right there. That's what I'm looking for. I want to get right into that section. So you're going to cut right on top of your bobbin thread. And you can see that I'm getting um, cut edges here. Mm -hmm. That's what I was talking about earlier, where you get, are going to get a difference between a loop and a cut edge. And so you're gonna go all the way around. I'm gonna end up slicing my hand. That's gonna just right into my thumb, isn't it? Yep, let's not do that. 
I match my husband. I mean, I'm totally okay with blood, but um, we definitely we do want to be peachy and we don't want to no, uh, freak anybody out. So again, this is easier when you're not trying to go off to the side. <laughs> Plus when your seam ripper is nice and sharp. sharp. This is very old. I don't even know how long this has been here. Longer than me. Probably needs to be replaced. All right, so you can see that ring that is being created there. Nice little mess that we're making, keeping uh, Karen up, giving her a job. Mm -hmm. All right, if you have any strings that are still across, that means that that one won't pull to the front. So you can just go right back over any spot and cut. All right, so when you are using a colored bobbin, that is your area that you can kind of separate it. If you've got an area that's not cut, you can just literally go, oh, nope, missed that spot. I need to do it. So you can feel around with whatever your seam ripper tip and go around and say, yep, mm -hmm. now we've got them all. Mm -hmm. That is literally how we are going to work the back of our stitched with standard, but contrast color. Now, on the water, here we go. So much easier. So this is my um, starch pen. Starch pen. It's still liquid. And you can see I'm just going to get that wet. Um, I am generally giving it a little bit of pressure as well as liquid. And you can see that those areas are literally separating the thread. So you can see that this pink here is separating. It does that pretty much all on its own. And I am giving it a little bit of pressure in between, but not a whole lot. Um, but you do have to give it a little bit, just, you know, tell it who's boss, just, just a little bit. Um, starch is going to be a little stickier than, uh, your water, but the, uh, idea is still the same. And when you have two rings, this is so much easier than having to figure out where to cut there. Mm -hmm. Because you have that inner ring from that outside circle, you have a stitch line here that you don't want to cut. Yeah. So when you have the water, a lot easier. You don't have to worry about it. You're not putting scissors anywhere worrying, am I supposed to cut that spot? Am I not supposed to cut that spot? So only the stitches that are supposed to dissolve will dissolve. Will dissolve. Exactly. So it's a much less stressful um, option. And you can see these have loop edges where these have rough edges. And these are a little bit longer than these are. So yeah. you do get a different fringe look depending upon which technique that you are using. So um, pull that around. So flip it around so they can see the other side. Yep. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it'll be a good way for them to see if you're missing anything. Because if it doesn't, if you can't pull it to the front. Right. Then so I actually, I generally use my, what do you use? My tweezers stiletto. Or, yep. Yeah. Tweezers, stiletto, whatever I happen to have right by me <laughs> is really the answer to that. Um, stiletto, tweezers, uh, seam ripper. What we want to do is pull these to the top. So I don't pull hard. Um, you shouldn't have to pull hard. Um, but what you're going to do is pull all of these stitches up to the top. And that is literally where your fringe is. So you've got, um, and assuming that you've clipped everything, they are going to come right up. Mm -hmm. So it should be a very, very simple process to get all of those up at the front. If you've missed some, you're going to go to pull and it's not going to go. Right. And then you're going to just flip it over and be like, oh, where did I miss a stitch? And find that stitch, clip it or get it wet, whichever side it is that mm -hmm. you did. This is not 100% uncommon too. Sometimes you get it, just chuck that. Yep. If you get a bobbin thread, you can clip it or um, leave it in for accent. <laughs> leave, leave it in for accent, depending. Um, but generally, you know, if you've put a huge contrast, like I don't, I wouldn't want brown in my pink flower. Um, so I would just clip it and get, get rid of that. On the water soluble, I don't want to 
now that I have these beautiful loops, I don't want to pull so hard that I rip the loop. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little more gentle about what I'm doing here, uh, but you can see how easy those are coming up. Super simple. The, um, and again, I'm gonna get a few rando pieces yeah. that, that come. So let me try and go really, whoop, try that again. <laughs> Let's get closer now that everybody's probably, yeah, there you go. Now you can see the loops. So on the inner circles here, if I had to clip those with my scissors, mm -hmm. I would not be pulling these that easily. Nope. I would definitely have um, to fight to get those to come up. But you can very clearly see the different lengths mm -hmm. of fringe. Much, much harder to do if you have uh, just a different color bobbin because you can't see as clearly and clip as easily right. as the water soluble. So if you are planning to do fringe, I definitely recommend, and that look how full that is. I mean, that's just so pretty. Yeah, it is. Um, it, it just gives really, really, um, with the, the smooth ends instead of the clipped edges, it's mm -hmm. just super simple um, and happens so easily. So much less stress um, on doing those. Yeah, absolutely. So that is um, the difference. I'm sorry for the shaky camera, guys. Ooh, there we go. Um, won't be as noticeable now. So that's the difference between doing this for a water soluble versus a high contrast bobbin. Yes, and how much easier it is to get the water soluble out. It's yes. way less stressful, um, for sure. Yep. I don't have anything to add to that. Mm -mm. I mean, it's so fringe should not be a hard. Uh, <laughs> that didn't work. Okay. Hello. Hi. We're like, let's remove this one. From, there we go. <laughs> so um, I think fringe is. Um, it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. And it's it adds a lot. It's a 3D tool that. Um, is not difficult. You don't have multiple fabrics. You don't have to deal with trimming of, you know, getting a perfect trim. Right. Um, so it's something that you don't have to have quote unquote skill to be able to make look really, really good. Yep. Um, so I really like it. And um, it's, it's certainly uh, a lot of fun and, you know, the different threads that you can use. So you could use a decorative fun thread and have that look, um, you know, really different as well. Kimberbell uses it mostly in the flowers and that kind of thing. Um, like we were talking about earlier, there is um, that lion mane that was way back in, yeah. a, in a digital dealer from before they did the digital. Yeah. Um, but they had their flower fringe CD, which I think has been retired. Um, but there's been a lot of things. And, and they're, of course, not the only people that do fringe. I mean, fringe is out there. Um, I've done embroidery club with fringe. We did that really pretty Celtic little mm -hmm. flower. Yeah, Not flower uh, pillow. Yes, it was a Celtic design. Um, we did that, and that was we talked about the differences with it, and we everybody did. got water soluble thread. That was um, part of the class. Yeah. So um, certainly, um, Pam asked, uh, "Was there fringe on cup of cheer or spring showers?" I don't believe so. No, I, I that's what I that's why I turned um, around. I don't see it on there anywhere. Nope. No. I'm trying to think the last time there was fringe. It's been a while. Um, hmm. I. It's been a while. It has been a little bit. Yeah. I can't think of. Me either. Um, there was fringe on make yourself at uh, the make yourself at home quilt. Yeah. Um, the lights had fringe on them. So they certainly... Um, the snowman has fringe. Oh, yeah. The the fringe on the hats. Oh, yeah. And the scarf. Yep. Good good job. Thanks, Connie. You know, it's little things. So many things. Um, but yes, um, very easy to do. Um, and like we said, very easy, but a lot of bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. um, and again, if you pick up some water soluble thread, it certainly um, will give you um, a very easy time of finishing. It is yeah. not hard. No. Um, and if you've never tried it, I really do recommend um, picking up some Definitely. some water soluble thread. It, it really is, as you saw, so much easier, easier. 
Um, and especially when you have the multiple layers, if you are doing double circles, it it's like night and day. <laughs> it really, really is a very large difference. So Pam is asking, um, in order to have fringe, there has to be uh, satin stitch after. There has to be some. There has to be something. Yes. Um, so if it's not a satin stitch, it has to be like a couple rows of running stitches or tight stitches, something like that. Right. Anytime that you're going to cut and remove or dissolve and remove your bobbin stitches, your threads are going to fall off whatever it is that you're doing, unless there's some sort of a tack down to keep them in place. Yeah. Hence the tight satin stitch or multiple layers of running stitches to mm -hmm. keep them there. So yeah. you have to have something that will keep them from falling off. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't really matter what it is, but it needs to have something on there and it needs to be enough stitches to keep them in place. Mm -hmm. um, Kathy so. said uh, there was fringe in the no place like home pillow. That was in one of the events. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In an event. Mm -hmm. And uh, fringe on the chicks and the Easter bench pillow as well. I haven't done the Easter one. I haven't done it either. So it's probably why I didn't remember it. Yeah, imagine. <laughs> There's so many things. You would think that we uh, we get to stitch everything, but we, we don't. Outside of the actual samples that we have here in the store, I don't get a whole lot stitched. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, and every time I think I want to do something for myself, there's a small part of me that is like, can I turn this into something that I can teach at work? Because otherwise, is it worth the Is it effort? worth the time to, to actually get that done? Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know. So if you wonder why we're doing a weird project, it's because one of us really wanted to really do it. Really wanted to teach it. And, and we wanted uh, it at home. We wanted, yeah. So if we want to do it at home, you're probably going to learn how to do it too. <laughs> Just like that. Just like that. So, uh, yeah, that is fringe. Does mm -hmm. anybody have any questions on that? Um, you know, like we said, the hardest thing is remembering to change your bobbin, uh, which hopefully if you have them sitting in front of you and your directions are telling you to change your bobbin, if your directions don't tell you to change your bobbin, write it in there before you sit down to start doing it so that you're telling yourself literally in writing to change your bobbin so that yeah. you have a physical something to look at that says, hey, not necessarily, hey, dummy, but hey, you, go do this. Um, until you get in that habit, it's definitely... Um, and if the project... So sometimes when a project was created with Fringe, if it's an older project, it might not it might not stop. Like it does the outside and then it's, yeah. it doesn't stop. It doesn't have two separate color stops for the inner and the outer. Right. And if that's the case, then um, you have your water soluble in the entire time and not good. It disappears. So lots of uh, things to think about and um, pay attention to. So you now know how to make fringe very easy. Sometimes you have to manipulate your design um, and pay attention because like she said, they don't all um, come with ready-made ease. Right. Sometimes they Sometimes. just were not made that way. Um, because, you know, when they were originally doing that, the technique is there, but mm -hmm. maybe not the thought of, hey, I could use a different color thread here to make that easier. Yeah. And so there wasn't a two different color stop uh, piece. So, or because simply they just didn't ask us. You know, people don't always do that. If they did. Life would be so much easier. <laughs> it would be so much better. <laughs> so much better. So. Um, so, uh, that's fun with fringe. Um, we have a dime event coming. We do. And I'm looking forward to it. First of all, because I love the instructor. Yes. Ashley, Ashley. is fantastic. Yes. Um, and she always has so many fantastic ideas and, and things mm -hmm. that she can teach you. So it's in the hoop projects, yes. um, and things that you can do in the hoop. So really, really great. That is coming up. Um, will be in the newsletter, which will hopefully be out in the next few days. Friday um, the 27th is the day, and that's mm -hmm. at noon? At noon, yep. So that's coming right up. And there you is can, a Facebook thing already. So there is, can, and it is also on our calendar, which is on our uh, website, and you, there's a link in there um, to sign up for that if you are looking for that. Um, super exciting because it's always fun. Yes. And we have club classes coming up. I've got all of my files uh, created now. I want to do a few test stitches because there's a couple that I'm concerned are a few too many stitches in there. I need to make sure that they're going to stitch out okay, mm -hmm. um, but should be able to uh, get the 
a listing out. So we'll get that newsletter out mm -hmm. and um, get the kits ready. Yeah. And uh, block of the month. Mm -hmm. We're super close. Mm -hmm. And what else? So, yeah, we're, we're like actually almost to not having to pull our hair out. Yep. It's getting close. <laughs> I've got very little left, but um, <laughs> <laughs> we are getting close. Right, we're getting there. Yeah. So. so you haven't missed your email about block of the month. No. Um, we The batting should be arriving any day any now. Day. And um, once the batting has arrived, we'll get the bundles put together. And as soon as we ready? have everything ready, we'll email it so that you guys are welcome to pick up kits once we send that out. Um, mm -hmm. So as soon as we have it, you guys will know and we'll get them shipped to those that want shipped and we will go that route yep so so close mm -hmm. um and right now we are looking at the meeting days to be the last saturday of the month and the wednesday before it so however that happens to fall in the calendars mm -hmm. those are the plans and club classes we're going to move days a little bit but the saturday and the friday before it yeah so we're going to do uh weekend days mm -hmm. friday um, a friday and a saturday a friday option. and a saturday instead of the middle of the week um just logistically wise. Hoping um, to make things work a little better for the shops. So, yeah. So we um, don't have to um, move technology around so quite much. Quite so much. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give that a go. And again, that'll all be in the newsletter. So yeah, those are the plans. But we've those got lots of things coming up. And I'm doing embroidery. You're doing rotary. Mm -hmm. um, rotary cutting. Which will help yep. with um, Using sewing. Using sharp objects. <laughs> pointy things. Pointy things. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. So lots of fun. Um, so stay in touch. And um, I don't know that we've missed anything. I don't think so. Got anything? You got anything? Nope. Okay. I, I think we're good then. Yeah. So uh, we will, uh, it appears we stayed online the whole time. So <laughs> that's a bonus. And I um, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And we will see you next time. Yeah. All right. Stay tuned for whatever comes up next. Yeah. <laughs> Credits. Credits. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll Bye. see you next time. Bye.